spectrum, then you are, uh, uh, so one year at Bridge Program, then you finish last year of the undergraduate. So now you're labeled the playing field, then you do that additional one year for the graduate program, okay? So then you have four plus one. Indian Indian is Amar Agir School RIT. They prochur puniman prochur puniman Indian chhatro ke seven four plus four three plus two the okay prochur. Ane ami jokhon kesi 2011 and like half of the school was Indian students and they are good students very well. Amar classes jara ami kete class pora them graduate graduate class of finance reporting. Oi classes are my 50 percent of students pass the CFA exam in the first go. Very good students, smart students, you know. So. You know, it's uh, in uh, Bangladesh. This uh, our graduates are doing very well in the charter accountancy. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Oh, our students are doing very well, right? Yeah, of course, I know that. Sir, I'm Raki Laibe Dabu Kunshma. Ekhon, ekme kor. Shanti sir, Adab sir. I will still one minute. Sir, apna slide te ki share korbo. Uh, oh, sure, sure. My first slide is up, right? My first slide is up. The title page. Sir, uh, can, can I start? Sir, Absolutely. Sir, we share the yeah, share ta set a close court to be. Apna ta court to be. Sir, ta close. Doctor, doctor, we have a introductory slide. If you close your slide, then we can show our introductory slide. Doctor, Kori, can you hear me? Yeah. What do What do you want me to do? Uh, I have an introductory slide. So I should uh, stop sharing, right? Yes. Stop sharing. Okay, done. Okay. 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 Uh, yes, in Live. Recording. Okay, I'm starting. Uh, there, I'm, there, I'm having, I'm having echo. A lot of echo. Oh, from me? I don't okay. know. Yeah, now okay. it's okay. Now it is okay. 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 Dear all, a very good evening to everyone and welcome the honorable keynote speaker, session chairs, respected authors, and participants to the International Conference of Science and Contemporary Technologies, ICSCT 2021. Organized by Bangladesh University of Business and Technology, BUBT, and technical co sponsored by IEEE. I am the Alamgir Kovir, Assistant Professor, Department of Electrical and Electronic Engineering, BUBT, is working as session coordinator of the fourth keynote speech session of the first day of ICSCT 2021, titled as Theory and Practice, a focus on data analytics. First of all, I would like to introduce the honorable session chairs of this session. The first session chair of this session, Professor Shanti Narayan Ghosh, Director of Research, IQC, BUBT. He obtained his MBA in Accounting and Finance from University of Saskatchewan, Canada, and MCOM in Accounting from University of Dhaka, Bangladesh. Professor Ghosh has vast teaching and research experience in his long career life in different institutions, including at University of Dhaka. And the second session chair of this session, Professor Dr. Syed Masood Hussain, Dean, Faculty of Business and Social Sciences, BUBT. He obtained his PhD in Commerce Management Studies from Benarash Hindu University, India. He has experience in administration as Vice Chancellor of BJME University of Fashion Technology, Bangladesh. Before starting this session, I would like to mention that this keynote session will be continued from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. And within this one hour, keynote speaker will get 45 minutes and 15 minutes for discussion, question, answer and photo session. Now, I would like to request the Honorable Session Chair, Professor Shantinayan Ghosh, Director of Research and IQC BUVT to conduct the session. 
Thank you. Okay. Thank you, uh, Kobi, session coordinator. Good evening from Bangladesh to you all. And Dr. Kareem, uh, Khandagar Kareem, let me qualify it is a junior, junior Kareem. Uh, then uh, Dr. Suyad Masudushin, Professor of Accounting and Dean Faculty of Business, BUBT, the co-chair of this keynote session. Mr. M.D. Alamgir Kobi, Assistant Professor, Department of Electro Electrical and Electronic Engineering, BUBT, the session coordinator, technical staffs, M.D. Yasin Patwari and Tahareen Reha, Dear distinguished participants and respected audiences, I, on behalf of the ICS City 21 Organizing Committee and BBT, welcome you to this uh, keynote session on business informatics. <clears throat> I will participate in this session as the session chair I thank the authority to give me the opportunity to play the role of chair of this session. One of my responsibilities here is to introduce to you uh, today's keynote speaker. I feel lucky to have the opportunity to introduce Dr. Kareem to you because I know each other, we know each other for more than 40 years. I had the opportunity to observe him as a teenager in the university, as a researcher and also a teacher. At the very beginning, I mentioned this uh, Kareem Jr. because his father is also Dr. Kareem. Dr. Kareem did his BCom honors and MCom in accounting from Dhaka University during 80s when I was the chairman of the department of accounting in Dhaka University. After completion his studies in Bangladesh, he went to USA where he is serving now. Dr. Kareem did his MS from Eastern Michigan University and DBA from <clears throat> Mississippi State University. He is also a qualified CPA. At present, Dr. Kareem is a full professor of accounting and uh, chairman department of accounting of Manning School of Business, Massachusetts University, USA. Before joining the Manning School of Business, he taught in Rochester and Long Island. He has a long list of academic publications and achievements. He published uh, about 80 articles in 40 refereed uh, accounting journals. He has not uh, stopped his academic works. Still, he is uh, very active. It will not be enough if I compare his contribution with those of accounting scholar like A.C. Littleton, William Patton, R.J. Chambers. Once a professor R.J. Chambers was awarded as the best contributor of accounting literature with only 42 published articles. Yes. And uh, I think uh, Dr. Kareem has already beaten that. Dr. Kareem has already received some recognitions from the Accounting Society. He received Outstanding Teaching Awards in 1997, Outstanding Research Award in 1999, NBR Citation of Excellence, one of the most productive doctoral graduates top 10 doctoral graduates 
He is a member of the editorial board, accounting education of uh, AAA. Editor advances in accounting uh, behavioral research. His uh, specialization areas are financial accounting, management accounting, and behavioral accounting. We teachers of the Department of Accounting in Dhaka University are proud of him. Today, Dr. Karim will deliver a speech on theory and practice, a focus on data analytics. I hope we, uh, you will enjoy his uh, deliberation. You will get uh, last uh, 15 minutes of time to raise questions to clear any ambiguities. Let me uh, tell about uh, the role of uh, Professor Suyad Masood Hussain, the Dean Faculty of Business at UBT, will chair the question and answer session and uh, he will conclude the session. Now it is uh, up to Dr. Kareem to present his keynote uh, speech. So can I uh, share my screen now? Yes. yes. Can you see my screen? Yes, yeah. you can see. Oh, good. Uh, uh, sir, thank you very much for a wonderful introdu introduction. I'm truly honored. Uh, a very warm welcome. Uh, to the, uh, uh, to the faculty and the student and the staff of BT, uh, BUBT in, uh, in Dhaka, Bangladesh. And uh, a very warm welcome and uh, thank you very much for having me and I'm truly honored to be your keynote speaker this morning. Uh, before I start, uh, one question must be coming in your mind that being an accounting, being an accounting faculty, why am I presenting data analytics? Data analytics is basically a subject of management science. Uh, and being an, accounting, being an accounting student or accounting faculty, you know that every day, every day when you join the workforce, every day you deal with data because that's what accounting students and accounting faculty members deal with, data. And when you say data, the data can be small data or a big data, but data has no value until and unless we analyze it. So we analyze in a such a way that so the consumers can use the data to make their decision. And that's what data analytics is all about. And academia, practitioner bodies, they are heavily concentrating on data analytics because it's a major item that people talk about these days in the US. And that's happening globally in Australia and UK. So that's the main motivation why I'm presenting this. And I'm also a, uh, lead individual at my own school, spearheading this initiative of incorporating data analytics in the accounting curriculum, okay? So let's start with the um, first slide. So what is big data? So that's, that's, that, that's, that's, a, that's a very, um, that's pretty intuitive, right? So what is a big data? So the big data is basically, we have decided to take big data to the next level. That's what we are trying to do through analytics, right? Because it is humongous, it's huge data set. It can be financial data, it can be market data, it can marketing data, it can be management data, it can HR data, any sort of data, they're all big data. Healthcare industry has big data, right? So what do you do? You bring this data to the next level for analysis, for visualization, for consumption, so that the user can use this data for decision-making purposes. So data growth, look at this, this is this is very interesting. So look at this, how the growth has increased in exponential growth. Uh, so we are, we are right here, right? So this growth, you see the growth is like a more than expected because since the pandemic hit, you and I, we are all working virtually, right? Everything is computer-based. So we are using data in a very exponential rate. So as a result, the numbers we, as you see like in 20, it is 64 to zigabyte. So zigabyte is more than a gigabyte. So this is, 
So the exponential increase is because of the pandemic hit. Everybody's virtual, everybody's working online, and they're predicting that in 2025 is going to go up to this level, 181 this is a byte. Okay. So what I'm saying is the volume of data information created, captured, copied, and consumed worldwide is tremendously on exponentially going at a higher rate. Okay. So so it is worth talking about analytics. It is worth talking about big data. Okay. So next item. So what is data analytics? So data analytics is a process or a science of evaluating raw data with the purpose of drawing conclusion to address business questions. So it is like data retrieval or data mining, data quality, data analysis, data visualization. This is all part of data analytics, okay? So data analytics is used in many industries to allow companies and organizations to make better business decisions in the science to verify or disapprove existing models of theories. So because we have theories, uh, say for example, uh, CAPM, uh, capital asset pricing model, right? So we have return on the risk data and we can get the data from CRISP, Center for Res uh, Research and Stock Prices. And we get the data for maybe 40 years and then we can come up with some equation or some evidence through running Y as a function of X. And we can come up with some evidence with some control variables. And we can give an evidence that this is we found. But sometimes we might see that the results are not as expected. So it means that theory is not working. So that's what they're saying that sometimes analytics helps you to take decision and the decision can force you to accept or reject a theory, okay? Effective analytics provides a way to search through large structured and unstructured data to identify unknown patterns of relationships. So X and Y is a relationship. We can say risk and return has a relationship, right? Because that's what we learn in uh, uh, CAPM. Uh, we also learned that you know, large firms uh, provide more information than small firms. These are all uh, established in accounting literature, right? So, um, so effective data analytics provide a way to search through large structured unstructured data to identify unknown patterns or relationships. So what is data mining? The overall goal of data mining process, uh, data mining process is to extract information from a data set and transform it into an un understandable structure for future use. Sometimes data is, data is a pretty messy. Think about, uh, think about healthcare situation, right? So we have positivity rate, we have hospitalization rate, we have death rate, right? And the way the data are published by the healthcare industry sometimes are not understandable by regular people like you and I. So what the analytics will do, the analytics will customize the data in a way so that a regular use can use the data to make decisions. And so basically trying to translate the messy data into a understandable format or transformation of the messy data into a data which can be used by regular user for making proper decisions okay so so when you talk about <clears throat> when you talk about data mining it can be used for predicting prediction prediction discovering meaningful new cor correlations patterns trends like bar graph pie chart trend analysis you can do all these things right or you can use this for forecasting. You have some historical data and you can predict future. So say for example, so you're doing cash flow and accounting earnings, right? So you can have historical earnings for predicting future cash flow. You see, so you can, you can, do, you can do a lot of interesting things. Uh, so emerging technology, so this is all technology, right? So this is, look at what data mining is, uh, what they said in MIT technology review. Data mining is one of the top 10 emerging technologies that will change the world listed by MIT Technology Review. So this is emerging. This is, this is really happening right now. It is not a talk. It is happening. So we are in it. So we got to get be more active to make sure that our program, our curriculum, our profession is absolutely current with the demand of the, of the industry, okay? So there's no doubt, I quote something from the MIT Technology Review. There's no doubt why many firms embrace data mining in their operations. An article in Information Systems Management points out that data mining has become a widely accepted process for organizations to enhance their organization performance 
and gain a competitive advantage. So you see, information systems management points out data mining is important. It is, it is important for increasing your efficiency, your performance, or taking right decisions that it makes you very competitive in the industry, okay? And I am quoting also something uh, written by Vern Richardson and Marsha and Watson in Accounting Horizon in 2020 article, the article titled Act or Be Acted Upon, Revolutionizing Accounting Curriculums with Data Analytics Revolution, Revolutionizing Accounting Curriculums with Data Analytics. So technology in that article, they said, author said technology is revolutionizing accounting. To survive, accountants must focus on areas where they can complement technology and carve out a competitive advantage where the expertise of the accountants is uniquely needed. So, the, so it is not only academics, not students, it is needed by everybody. The profession needs it. This is the demand today and we are in it. We need to address it. So what is big data? The, my first slide, if you remember, humongous data we talk about, right? So what is big data? So there are many examples of data that make some of it big, big data, right? So classic definition involves around three Vs. There are three Vs, volume, velocity, and variety. Volume, velocity, and variety. So volume, there is just, just there is, it just a lot of it being generated all the time. Things get interesting and big when you cannot you cannot fit it all in one computer anymore. So one computer, you know, computer has got limited storage capacity, memory capacity, that get constrained, right? So why? There are many ideas that all re revolve around being able to process data that goes from terabyte, petabyte and exabytes. So it is humongous. So one computer can handle it. So what is the solution? So solution is we got to do data analytics. So what is velocity? Data is being generated very quickly. They can even store it at all. If not, then what do we get rid of and what do we keep? So this is a big decision. Like think about this conference, right? You got a lot of papers, a lot of ideas. So you're going to have stored everything but you cannot store everything because you, you don't want to store everything. You want to store exactly the amount of data you want, you need. And analytics can give you that information. What do I keep and what do I discard, okay? And variety, data variety, type of data, right? Variety is the data types we mentioned all take different shapes. What does it mean to store them so that we can play with it and compare them with other variables other constructs like auto industry data can be compared with auto co companies. Technology data can be compared with technology firms. Retail data can be compared with retail firms. So we need to have dollar for dollar comparison so that the data can be labeled, data can be used for labeling the playing field for comparability of the data. Consistency and comparability is very, very important for data analytics. So data science versus data, big data and data analytics. So if you look at these three graphs here, so data science, I say analytics is a part of data science. So data science is a field that comprises everything that is related to the data, cleaning, preparation and analysis. Data analytics is something that is used to analyze insight, which can lead to better understanding and strategy for taking strategic moves and data that's a big data, sorry. And data analytics is the discovery and interpretation and communication of the data in a meaningful way, right? So these three concepts are kind of interrelated, data science, data, big data, and data analytics. So now if you create three subsets, you create three subsets. So this is, uh, this is a subset for, this is a subset for computer science. This is a subset for statistical mathematical math, mathematics and statistics and this is business so look at it they are so interrelated so if you isolate business and keep only computer science and stats and math then you see there are three things going around here there we're talking about software we're talking about data science machine learning if you keep computer science and business 
you have data science, <clears throat> software, business analytics, and business. So they are, what I'm saying is these are all interrelated. They're a subset of the same major group of discipline, which is called management science, okay? So, <clears throat> so why are we talking about management science, big data, and data analytics? Because most of the programs in US, accounting programs that try to be part of STEM, 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 science, technology, engineering, and math. So they are saying that we are not liberal arts. We are not social science. We are part of the math. So most of the time, accounting programs are saying that we should belong to the engineering school or science school because we are doing so science, okay? We are, we are doing all data. We are playing with the data, okay? That's what they're claiming. And a lot of programs are doing this, just to let you know. And this is, this is all happening right now. So what does it mean to extract, transform, and, and load? Step one. So if I give you a set of data, so I say, determine the purpose and the scope of the data request. Why do you need it? So I need financial data, right? Or earning data, total asset data, <clears throat> leverage data. Why do you need it? First is purpose, goal. Second item is I need to get the data, obtain the data. Step two, validate accuracy, precision, completeness, and integrity of the data. Is it ethical? Is it coming from a reliable source? Is it coming from some hunky bunky site from the website, which is which has no validity? Nobody can provide any assurance about the reliability of the data, right? We have to prove that. Four, once you have that, then you clean up the data for outliers, missing values. Uh, maybe you say, okay, I'm gonna look at only the positive earnings number, not the negative earning numbers. So I'm gonna delete the negative earning numbers. So fine tuning the data in other words. And the next thing is load the data for data analysis. So you see, you have to go through steps. It is not like one key store. Computer is gonna, computer is gonna do that for you, there's no doubt, but you have to go through a process, instruction, which is mining, transformation, and the load, okay? So why does data analytics matter to accountants? That's, that's, that's the talk of town, right? That's why we are here today. Why do, we, why do I need it? Why do you need it? Because we are not management science folks, we are accountants. Why do we need it? Why are we making a big fuss about this? So here's the deal. Analytics enhance audit quality. Because audit analytics, auditors need this, right? Because audit goes to the audit client and they need, they need this concept of data analytics because they're dealing with clients data, humongous data, okay? <clears throat> Give you a, a nice academic lecture here. <clears throat> Uh, in the old time, even now, auditors never look at all numbers. Auditors never look at the population. What do they do? The sample, audit sampling, 10%, 20%. Get 20% data, do an analysis, and conclude some inference about the population. So we are doing a statistical sampling, to conclude about the attributes of the population. But with the help of analytics, the concept of sampling will go away. It will go away. So now auditors will look at the population itself. So if you have humongous data, auditors don't care. They're gonna do analytics. They're gonna use every single data point to come up with the decision. You see, this is huge. So very frankly, I sometimes say that all the audit books they have written, the audit books have been thrown out. The audit sampling, the concept of audit sampling will be completely gone. That is the direction we are heading. In fact, 2024, just to let you know, folks who are interested to be a CPA, 2024, starting 2024, there's a new CPA exam coming out. Now CPA exam has a special skill set exam on analytics, which is called technology skill set, which we didn't have. When I passed the exam, five parts, very parochial audit, financial accounting, management accounting, governmental accounting, systems, and business law and audit. Now you have a skill set, technology, audit, and financial reporting, okay? And so it's like medical med school. In med school, when you go to med school, you internal medicine, surgery, cardiology, th that kind of thing they're doing, right? So it is not a plain vanilla anymore. Every CPA, when they pass the CPA exam, they know exactly what they're gonna do when they join the workforce. Are you gonna do assurance services? 
They can do tax or management consulting. So most of the analytic folks will go into management consulting, okay? Just let you know. So analytics enhances audit quality. The timing of audit execution, use of, uh, hang on one second, please. Uh, experience of engagement teams, management deliverable audit hours by areas of significant risk. So this is, this is all risky issues because timing is a big issue, right? Timing of audit execution, use of a specialist, partner, manager, leverage, experience of engagement. So analytics enhances audit quality because the audit quality depends on those attributes. So data analytics enables enhanced audit, expanded services and added values. Now, you don't have to worry about sampling anymore. You can do population and that can really give you 100% reliability about the quality of the population you're looking at, okay? And then external auditors, stay engaged to be on the audit. So yeah, you're not really doing a traditional audit, but you're also doing analytics. Believe me or not, last year, Pricewaterhouse, entry-level accountants talking about 25%, 25 to 30% of the entry-level hirees are non-accounting folks. It is not a good news for you and I, but it's a good news in one sense because that forces us to improve the quality of the curriculum in accounting. And that way we can make our students marketable to join the workforce, which will work hand to hand with the demand of the industry, okay? So impact cycle of data analytics. So it's an impact cycle. This is very important So questions. I talk about impact cycle already. So this, this is a cycle we call it impact. I, identifying questions. M, master the data. P, perform the test, A, address and refine results, C, communicate insights, T, track the outcome. So once you finish the cycle, you're doing analytics. So analytic goes through a cycle and that cycle is called impact cycle. So in gets impact cycle defined, understanding business problems that need to be addressed. All our employees, circumventing internal control over payments. Are there any suspicious travel or entertainment expenses? Maybe those are the two things the auditor is gonna investigate. Those are red flag items, right? So maybe that's your business problem. I'm just giving a hypothetical case scenario, how it can be operationalized in regular audit engagement with the help of analytics, okay? Two, what data do I need? Do I need ERP data, enterprise resource planning data, external network data? data warehouse, data dictionaries, we need all this, right? What data is available and how can we relate to the problem? Because we need to get relevant data. We cannot just start searching for data from all over the place. We got to see the source and the relevance of the data. Then the appropriate model and target variables, classification and regression we need to use, right? We need to somehow find out some relationship between the X and the Y variables. auditors should have meeting with the CFO and they can have meeting with the internal auditors to get additional information for clarification, okay? And then communicate. You can create static reports. You can provide information on the dashboard just to, so that you can communicate in an effective way in a clear language. And you can also use visualization techniques. You can use graphs, models, bar charts, and stuff like that and follow up on the results. How frequently should the analysis be performed? Have the analytics change? So you have to talk about all that, okay? And hands-on example, given my borrower profile, can I expect Lending Club to extend loan to me? So this is another example of analytics. So I'm a, I'm a borrower. I've, go to the lender and lender will look at my financial situation and then lender is going to decide whether is worthwhile giving me loan because make sure that lender will first, first thing the lender is going to do am i a risk free or less risky borrower right because otherwise the lender is not going to give you money 
So they're going to lender is going to do lender is going to look at your financial profile, maybe ten years balance sheet, ten years income statement, right? Your tax payment, all these things you're going to look at. How long you have been on the job? Are you renting a house? Are you owning a house? This kind of things. Several questions they're going to ask you, right? So data on approved and rejected loans. So there will be a big master file and they have rejected applicants, accepted applicants. And then we can analyze them what conditions wanted me to approve somebody's loan and what conditions wanted me to reject somebody's loan. And then perform three analysis to predict whether we receive the loan. So performance tests. I just, this is hypothetical. I'm just giving you an example. I'm trying to, all this theoretical discussion, I said theory and practice. So I'm trying to move to the practice now, right? So debt to income, the DTI ratios, I can do debt to income ratios. I can calculate a number of rejected loans and see that all the loans I rejected, what was their DTI ratio? Length of employment, number of rejected loans. Credit rating, because credit, credit, credit rating score is big time in the US. I don't know whether in Bangladesh you do that, but here, they say that a good score is 700 and above. They look at how many credit cards you have. Are your credit card payment defaulter? Are you paying your bills on time? Uh, are you renting a house or are you owning a house? Uh, what's your income level? Your members in the family, all these things variable coming to decide your credit score, okay? When you finish your school, your numbers are very low, by the way, because you don't have any established credit record, right? So your numbers are maybe five or 400. And then over time, when you build up your record, the number goes up to 7 to 750. If you get a score of 7, 750, it's very good. Very good. Okay. And then address and refined results, interaction of credit scores and DTI. So you can see a relationship between scores and debt to income ratio. And employment, length of employment is a very good thing. So what do you do? You put this information in columns in Excel, and then you can create a pivot table, right? You can have sort in that you, you do the sort you sort the variables and you can search, you can search information putting constraints, constraints of those variables, okay? You say, give me data of five districts on people's income. And you can put a constraint, give me the people's name and address of those people who are, whose income is over 100,000 taka, okay? Or $100,000. And they give you the information about those people. Or give me the, give me the information about the people where the DTI ratio is over 50%, okay? So you can get this data from the pivot table by putting those constraints. This is an Excel, Excel can do that for you. So pivot tables provide a simple visual, additional visualization or tools may provide quick analysis by those evaluating the loans. Another goal is to share the results in plain English. If you have good credit, low debt to income ratio, a long employment leg is very likely that you may be accepted for the loan, right? This, that's a theory, right? So, and that's what you need. So hands-on example continued, extending this analysis to future periods will help to us determine whether these factors hold true or if there are some shift in the future. So whatever historical data we have, we can use this historical data to predict future because future assumptions might change, right? Economic trend might change. Like right now, pandemic has changed and shifted the economy. We are trying to open up the economy, but pandemic is just keep hitting us nonstop, right? So economic conditions, macroeconomic conditions and constraint changes. Because we tend to use past performance to predict future results, when factors change, we repeat the entire cycle. And that's, so again, let me repeat the cycle because you cannot use all assumptions to predict future, you see? So now this is a pivot table. I just gave an example. I took a screenshot of that. So think about it. this is my, these are my um, uh, count of rejected loans, right? Think about it. So <clears throat> we are saying that high, um, high, uh, high level, excellent, excellent. Uh, this is the uh, excellent. We have excellent uh, uh, attributes with 2,494 people have excellent uh, DTI scores. Uh, uh, high, uh, longer length of employment, and also high risk score, uh, high risk score, uh, score bucket means their, their, uh, their uh, credit scores are pretty high, right? So if you look at this, I put some constraints in Excel, if you constraint, then it gives you numbers. Say for example, 
count of rejected loans. So anybody who has a job of less than one year, 543 applications have been rejected. If somebody has 10 years or more job, uh, one, 10, is on the job for 10 years or more, the rejected loans are only 365, then you can ask, why is that? Because working for 10 and a half years, maybe the DTI score is low. So what do you do is if you select on the checkbox, rejected loans, risk score bucket, which is your credit score, debt to income ratio and employment length, then it will give you, by matching those attributes, it give you the number of applications rejected based on those attributes. And then into each category, they give you the number. So I, is this is a partial picture, it's not a complete picture. So if you do it in a real world scenario, you will get a complete picture. But I just got a screenshot of this just to show you how the pivot typicals look like when you put those attributes in the pivot table, okay? So type of data analytics. So data analytics is, has different types. So uh, let me go here. So difficulty is, this is my x-axis is difficulty level of y-axis value, right? So it can be a descriptive analytics, diagnostic analytics, predictive analytics, and optimization and foresight, okay? So, so it's a various type of things you can do with the analytics, different type of analytics. So descriptive is summary of statistics. We know that, we learned that in stats one, right? From Jagodisa, right? And the summary of statistics versus population matching. Predictive, OLS estimates. X is a function, Y is a function of X, right? Prescriptive, DS, DSS, data support system, AI, artificial intelligence, machine learning, right? You train the machine to do few things on a repeated basis. Like human involvement is not necessary. You train the machine. Uh, give you a nice example. Like, you know, you know in a word, <clears throat> in, a word, in a word processor, in a word processor, we do a spell checking. What is spell checking? Spell checking is artificial intelligence, right? A spam folder. I get junk mail dump in the spam folder. What is it? Artificial intelligence. Because you train the machine, you're telling the machine, hey, if you encounter something like this, go to the spam folder. I spell something in English, my spell is wrong. So the program is interfaced with a big database, which is called English taxonomy, goes to the taxonomy, get the words, and if the number, the, the spelling I'm doing is not matching with the taxonomy, then the spell checker say your spelling is wrong. That's artificial intelligence because I trained the machine <laughs> to identify the spelling in a given way. And so how many different kind of analytics we can think of? Audit analytics, managerial analytics, financial statement analytics, and tax analytics, okay? So everybody is doing it in our profession, okay? Data visualization. So now we are talking about visualization. Why? Because we need to communicate our data, our information to the users of information, okay? Uh, let me see. I have to move this picture thing because it's getting obstruction on my, okay. So conceptual and qualitative data. So data is not always quantitative. It can be qualitative. So when you talk about quality data, it can be bar chart, by chart, comparison purposes, right? Different color scheme you can use, stack bars, tree maps, heat map, geographic data, symbol map, text data, word cloud, or data-driven quantitative, quantitative data again. So quanti qualitative and quantitative data, number-based data, right? Numerical data, outliers detection, box, whisker plot, the relationship between two variables, which is regression, scatter plot we can do, right? X and Y, that we did a few minutes ago, right? Uh, uh, I'm talking about this kind of thing. This is, a, this is a scatter plot, we can plot here in between, right? We can do a plot here in the X and Y plane. <clears throat> and then uh, we can do trend over time. We can do X and Y plane and we can do the, we can do the um, with the chart. So what I'm saying is, uh, let me draw here for you. Well, so we can do some sort of a X, Y, and then we can plot, this is my Y, this is my X, right? And we can plot here either from the origin or we can have some line from here, just something like that, okay? 
<clears throat> and exhibits. So these are exhibits. That's how we can communicate to the users. I can use pie chart, which is which we are very familiar with, right? We can do column chart. We can do data, and data are everywhere. Look at this. Data are in the world cloud. This is the iCloud, right? It's not the iCloud. There are a lot of vendor-based data set which is on the web now. So iCloud is one of them. And we have Excel data. We have uh, any sales data, purchase data, production data, any data you can think of. HR data, right? Stack bars we can use. By the, by the way, uh, for medical science, this is very popular. My wife uses this. She's a medical doctor, so she uses that extensively. Tools for creating visualization. So we can use Tableau, Microsoft BI, business intelligence are great tools for explanatory data, for data analytics. And Tableau, Tableau by the way, for, for the faculty and the students, Tableau has Tableau certification and it is self-taught. It costs $100 for making your, yourself very marketable in the industry. I strongly suggest that go to the website and sit for the certification exam. There are 40 questions. Now there are 45 questions, you have to pass 40 of them. And once you do that, they give a Tableau certification and it will be extremely marketable. And you can put that thing on your LinkedIn page that you're not only an undergraduate in accounting or master's in accounting, but you are also Tableau certified. And that's gonna make you very, very marketable. That's a good piece of advice, okay? Microsoft Excel, definitely we all know, right? That's, that's we just talked about, and I am pretty sure we all know this as an accountant. Tools for creating visualization. So look at this, this is, this is interesting. So you look at if you while access is ability to execute and access is competitive vision. So, and challenging and leaders. So leaders are, uh, let me, let me go here, highlight. So leaders are uh, very frankly, leaders at Tableau. Tableau is a big leader and academia are also in practice. Microsoft Excel is, is a big leader, right? And then if you talk about visionary, SAS, which is a statistical package, SAP, which is ERP system, IBM, the thing you and I are very familiar with. Let's talk Oracle is a ERP one, right? It's, it's a challenger, but it is niche. Not everybody can use it. I, I don't think you can teach Oracle in the classroom. It's just, it's not, a, it's not a thing that we can teach. You have to learn that on the job, okay? That's why it is not visionary, it is niche. It is used only for the specific purposes, okay? Pyramid analysis, but don't be scared. I mean, you, you, you don't, you learn this when you get a job, your employer is gonna send you for workshops, for training and different continuing education. Every employer has it. And uh, how am I doing in terms of time? Okay, I'm good, okay. <clears throat> so I think I'm almost uh, towards the end, uh, I hope. So uh, let me see. So the next thing is tech making accountants obsolete. This is those, now you're thinking, right? You're sitting there and say, am I obsolete? No, you're not obsolete. We are not obsolete. So I'm going to give you to, so IBM PC in and this is this this is the this is how the PC is going to look like right back back in eighty one right it's funny isn't it Lotus one two three do you remember the, before Excel came Lotus one two three we used back in the old days maybe Shanti sir can say that uh, and then QuickBooks we used for tax purposes but QuickBooks the hundreds of different type of vendors came out with QuickBooks type of competitive products okay so things changing Tableau a Tableau tax. Tableau, these are all coming now, right? So tech making account is obsolete. Artificial intelligence come in, expert systems, neural networking. These are all making accountants obsolete. That's what we're thinking about. Internet, right? Worldwide web, cloud, XML, which is an application of XPRL, right? XPRL, audit data standards, blockchain, Digital assets like uh, uh, bitcoins, right? This is all the, the, you're thinking about this. Oh my God, where am I? What am I doing? What am I going to do with my degree, right? RPA, straight through reporting, controlled rules, driven environments. These are all, so we are still here, but we're still here, right? We are here. We are having this accounting conference. So change is happening. We know that change is happening. So change is happening. So what do we do? A to Z of emerging technologies. 
<clears throat> all this <clears throat> all this terminology we have talked about today right analytics <clears throat> and some of the ones i yellow because those are the things we we heard quite often today during my presentation big data blockchain cloud data standardization drone excel advanced we heard that the yellow we heard a lot of things but uh, those are the things we heard today in the morning right and then on this side is the flow charting microsoft product suite python is a good one for accounting students r robotic process which is which is ai artificial intelligence xprl right so what is the impact on accounting professional this is very important that's what you see this is the thing let's solve this problem by using data big data and big data none of us have the slightest idea what to do with it we just do not know what to do with it okay this is important so you see in the boardroom they're talking about this right so big data implications for accounting professionals, audit, advisory services, they, these folks will be impacted heavily. <clears throat> so they, nobody's immune, nobody's immune. Don't think you're immune, you can get out of it. No, you cannot, there's, there's no escape route. Tax accounting, management accounting, implication for accounting professionals. Corporate compliance for data management. Continues advisory services. These are not these are not traditional accounting folks, finance folks, MIS folks, management science folks, computer science, software engineers. They will go and be a, a management consultant and big four accounting firms. Okay. Identify questions, solutions. Use analytics to help business improve performance. Process better processes better risk management, build analytical modelings, okay? They're hiring doctors, engineers, lawyers, and accounting profession, okay? Tax, analyze tax efficiencies of business units, identify tax opportunities. You wanna shelter your earnings, aid in evaluating global opportunities for cross-border trading. Bangladesh having trading with United States or Europe or Australia or China, right? This is, this is analytics is gonna back those people. Managerial people, risk identification, risk management, operational improvements, forecasting, optimization modeling. Think about it. It's just on and on and on. I mean, this is you. This is just not one thing. I mean, you, we have to be we have to be proactive to make the change. So data versus big data. So accounting professional need to know how to conduct big data analytics, regardless whether the data is big or not. It doesn't matter. So don't think that data is big, I do analytics. If data is small, I'm not gonna do that. That's absolutely wrong. We need to know analytics, regardless of the size of the data set. Accounting data, market data, audit data can tell what has happened. Big data and data analytics can often help explain why it happened. It gives a why answer. What are employers looking for? This is very important. This is very important for students, right? And also for professors. An employee with the following skills, ability to code, computer coding. Python is a good example. Understanding big data technology structures, data structures. Ability to construct experiments, gather, analyze data, make evidence-based decisions. Strong communication skill. If you ask me to go talk to a physicist about accounting data, make sure you do a watered down version I tell my students, make it jello. I can give you an example. I took process costing from Shanti sir. And believe me or not, I told him many years ago, till today when I teach my introductory management accounting, still I do not open the process costing chapter. The thing I learned from him, I'm sending the same message to my American students, okay? This is how I learned it because he knows how to deliver the goods to the students. You see, that's creating impact. So you have to have a very strong communication skill about your concept. You see, this is very important. Get your point across clear, simple, and understandable. Strong quantitative and qualitative skills in statistical analysis, visual analytics, machine learning ability to analyze unstructured data. 
business expertise a good sense of where to apply the analytics and the big data? Of course. I mean, if you if you analyze the data, if you collect the data, if you mine the data, you finish your analytics, you should know what is the use of the data, where who is going to use it, for what purpose. That is very important, right? So it should be need-based. So graduates that think critically, identify issues, develop questions, define appropriate analysis, interpret the results. And graduates that are data literate, so critical thinking folks and the analytics folks are different, you see? So if you're data literate, know what data is available, how to store it and where to store it and how to access it. Understand data science, be able to bridge the gap between technical knowledge and the business knowledge, right? Because we are business folks, we don't have technical knowledge, but now we are saying, you do not need to have technical knowledge, but you should know how to implement the technical knowledge in our field it's because the field is very interdisciplinary. Our field is very interdisciplinary, okay? Graduate that can communicate the findings to the users. So how do we get there? How do we get there? This is technology, right? We are all pulling our hair now, right? We're pulling our hair. So this is technology. So curriculum is already full. We all know the curriculum is set. So faculty may be resistant because, you know, as a human being, we have a comfort zone, like a cat. Cat always like to have a comfort zone, right? We are all cats. So what do you do? We love comfort zone. We don't want to make any changes. If somebody says change it, you, you are not very happy about it. We just want to know why are you bothering me? I'm not bothering you, don't bother me. Let me enjoy my life, okay? You see what I mean? This human psychology, but you cannot do that. What technology should be used, should be using? Where we can get the data? These are some, this is something we get to think about, okay? We get to think about. So this is my journey, UML, U of Massachusetts Lowell. What now you might be questioning or asking or thinking, hey, what are you doing for your school? And I can tell you what we have done. Department of Accounting at UMass Lowell as chair. We look at employer needs. I have accounting advisory board. These are all corporate guys in Boston. Rich, loyal, successful alums of UMass. They come here, they advise me what to do. So we take their advice as a chair. I take the advice to the faculty and we worked on curriculum changes. You can have a accounting strategy committee or management strategy committee, marketing strategy committee. This committee can talk about these curriculum changes and bring to the faculty, full faculty, or the faculty of the department and get the curriculum improved because the curriculum is owned by the faculty. Curriculum cannot be imposed by the higher administration of the faculty to the faculty. It, you, cannot, you cannot do that. It is faculty driven. Let the faculty decide what they want to do. But you have to buy into it. You have to buy into it. How do you buy into it? You go to the advisory board, go to Modishil, Talk to them, industry guys, corporate guys, let them give you advice, and then you implement based on their advice, okay? So employer need is very important. Two, feedback from the advisory board. That's what we did. Three, follow ACSB standards, which is the accreditation committee uh, board in Florida. They give you rubber stamp. This is a branding mechanism. You can rebrand your program, but you're not quite there yet. Let's worry about the first two. Could the curriculum be reconfigured through the accounting strategy committee I just talked about, for example? Consistency, constraints, because curriculum is 120 hours, just constraint. You, can you jam more things in there? No. If you put one thing, you have to take one thing out, right? Because if you say 120 and tomorrow you say, hey, you're going to need unit 130 tomorrow, student will all run away from you. They're not going to stay in a program. Oh, this, I'm not going to be UPT because this program is too long, right? So you have 120, it takes some redundancy or some courses which are not usable or market will take them out and put the stuff which is absolutely needed by the students, okay? Limited to 120 hours. No accounting courses can be eliminated. Okay, accounting courses cannot be eliminated. Okay, some of the courses you don't need because very parochial, very traditionally can take them out from the curriculum. Final decision, reinforce technology skill throughout the curriculum. So what do you do? Just because the curriculum is maxed out, this is a way to do it. 
So you did course embedded, like a course embedded analytics, introductory management accounting, corporate financial reporting, MBA accounting. So you put a little bit of analytics projects into those courses. At three hours, that's what we did. Add a three hour course, grad level data analytics in the accounting course, as an accounting course. Add analytics option in the MSA program, we did. Send faculty to triple sponsored boot camps for analytics. And this is the textbook we use for the, which is written by Vern Richardson at the University of Arkansas. And this is something you can use for your, again, I strongly suggest you use that book for your curriculum. It's a McGraw Hill book. Sir, I will try to send you a copy of that book to you, okay? Thank you. Yeah, I will. And then look at the trend, what happened in 2000, top 10 technology, in top 10, 2000, right? Technology, Microsoft, and then Intel and Nokia in 2000, right? Look, look at what happened in 2018. How many technology, Apple, Google, Amazon retail slash technology, Microsoft, Samsung, Facebook, and you, you, you just name it. I mean, it's just on and on. It's a technology. What I'm saying is the global branding is just based on technology enforcement, okay? So that's why we need to really focus on technology. Time for a major shift. According to Karamela Lahi, who leads the, this is, this is interesting for the, for the accounting professionals, who lead the US Assurance Experience Recruiting Team and oversee the firm's STEM talent acquisition strategy, communication skill, and technology capabilities are increasingly important along with accounting background. So it is important for accounting, but this, this, she is the recruiter for Pricewaterhouse, okay? Accounting and auditing professionals who make grades are accounting plus. So now they're saying recruiting accounting, very interesting, I love it, I love this thing. So for accounting, recruiting accounting grads, you don't just need accounting skill, you need accounting plus skill. You see, accounting plus, accounting plus. Interesting, isn't it? Yeah, it's very interesting. People who understand data are very data literate. They may have a minor or major in the data science, data analytics, computer science, programming, management information system. You can have a double major, but a minor, okay? PwC develops or buy, uh, buys new tools, softwares constantly in an effort to improve client communication and the efficiency of its audits. And it expects its auditors to be able to get up to speed quickly with new technology. So I highlight PwC because it's one of the big four. So it is not PwC, the Ernst & Young is doing, Deloitte is doing, KPMG is doing, everybody's doing it. Even regional firms are doing it. I call the meat sized firms, RSM, BDO, Grant Thornton, they're all doing it, all doing it. And in addition to these candidates, PwC has begun to hire more STEM, more STEM. I talk about this 25 to 30% drop of the new hirees by the accounting group and non-accounting folks are getting into the public accounting. STEM majors, even those without accounting degree. Pretty scary, right? Yeah, it is scary, but I will, I will not be scary. It is challenging. It's a challenging time in, for the accounting profession. So that's all about my uh, presentation. I think I took a little extra time. Oh my God, I, did, I have gone past my 45, 45 minutes. I'm very, very sorry. So that's all about my presentation. Questions and comments. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Karim, for your very nice, excellent, and informative presentation. You're welcome. So I hope uh, our audience has been highly enlightened through your deliberation of the paper and all its contents. Now I request the audience to put questions if they have any. Can I ask a question to our honorable keynote speaker, sir? Sure, you ask. Yeah, really. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, sir. Uh, Assalamu alaikum to everyone. I'm Professor uh, uh, Dr. Engineer Mohammed Dubai Chaudhary. I'm a professor of textile engineering. Okay. Uh, okay. New BT. 
so uh, the presentation was very nice sir sir um, uh, uh, as a professional of textile and as a student of textile i've seen a lot of data and software uh, that are engaged in the textile industries um, they're using data and software to receive the results from the industry and outputs efficiency of the uh, industries so they are using data and uh, software um, currently uh, successfully so, sir i would like to know the difference uh, between the big data and uh, the data they are using uh, right now uh, what is what are the differences between uh, these two things uh, so both are data they're using data and software yeah good yeah so uh, so 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 when you say when you say big data big data can be val volume or velocity and the value of the data right three v's so in textile industry when you say they play with data maybe they're not big data but they're dealing with data so what is the role of analytics? I said analytics will play a role regardless of the size of the data, whether the data is large data, big data, medium sized data. Why do we need analytics? We need analytics because when you see a set of data, the data has to be mined. You have to evaluate the quality of the data and you have to visualize the data in a way so that the regular reader of the data understand how this data has been retrieved and the, how the data can be used for decision-making purposes, okay? So analytics may not play a major role for a small data set, but when you're dealing with the big data, means when you're not doing sampling, then it plays a major role. For textile, maybe you're looking at maybe 200 textile mills in Bangladesh for the last 100 years. So then the analytics tools will play major role. Tableau can play a role. Uh, Microsoft BI may play a role. Uh, you can do a small set in the Excel, pivot table play a role. So it just depends how you're gonna use it. And plus analytics can also help you to make future forecasts. I don't think they use any forecast data because to do forecast data, you have to go, go extra mile to evaluate the quality of the data you're gonna use for forecast future, okay? Plus the data you use, I don't think they clean the data. They don't remove, they don't remove the outliers. They don't remove the missing data, okay? So data analytics is just not analyze the data that you have to complete the entire impact cycle before the analytic analytics is implemented formally to or to execute it formally for the use of the data, okay? So analytics is basically a management science. It, it is data science. It is not just simple data. It is not a simple thing. It, it's, 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 a, it's a science. And it is not just data analytics. It is mining, quality, visualization, three things you have to go through before the cycle is complete. Did I answer your question? Did I answer your question? Uh, yes, sir. Thank you very much. And one more question I would like to supplement that uh, government of Bangladesh uh, is mm. currently uh, running the vaccination program. Uh, yeah. I would say that uh, this vaccination program uh, is running very, very successfully. I know so, uh, and uh, this is very simple. Uh, anyone mm. uh, who can know the, who knows the basic can uh, make the registration uh, within one minute, I think. And uh, is, is, uh, is big data is involved uh, in this? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This let me, let me I can, I can, I, I'm not, I don't live there, so I can give you some hypothetical situation. So let's talk about your immunization program, okay? So let's talk about name of the patient, right? Their gender, their age, uh, their geography. When did you sign up for the vaccination? When did you get the vaccine? What was the lead time between the time you register and the time you get the vaccine? These are all these are all the things will be coming in the columns, right? And then you say, okay, fine. I like to see you say you say a threshold. Say, okay, I like to see the people get vaccine within ten days. 
but not necessary that everybody will get the vaccine within 10 days. Some folks will get the vaccine within five days. Some of the things, some of the people will get the vaccine within 15 days, okay? So if you say in the Excel, in the, in the pivot table, that I like to see in the Eastern part of the country among the female, how many of them got the vaccine within 15 days or within 10 days? If you put those constraints, the analytics will help you to get that information. Are you with me? In Excel, in, by, if you sort them in the pivot table, you can do that, okay? And if you don't wanna use pivot table, if you do something more advanced, you can do that in Tableau. Tableau will do that for you. Or Microsoft BI, business intelligence, okay? Yeah. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, it was a great presentation. Thank you. But I think I think your example, the example you said about vaccination, that's that's a perfect example. The healthcare industry has been using this for a while. Business folks never used it, but now we are talking about it. Okay. And one Thank thing you, you one thing you understand as an academic, as an academic, analytics is not a rocket science. Okay. But analytics, yes. I don't. Call, it's not a brain surgery. Okay. So when you yes. do research, when you do research, when you and I do research, we use analytics, collect data, clean the data, analyze the data, provide the evidence. This is all part of analytics, we're doing it, but it was never formalized. Nobody knew that this is analytics. You see, it was not formalized before, maybe 15 years ago, it was not formalized, but accountants and engineers or doctors, they're always getting their hand dirty with the data, okay? but it was never formalized in a curriculum fashion, but now we are doing it, okay? Thank you. Okay, any other questions? Uh, so I got a question from the chat box. I'm reading out uh, from the okay, audience. You can read out. Uh, I got one question. What should be primary roadmap to sell data product to business stakeholders? Can you, can you please, uh, Alungir, can you repeat that please? Yes. Uh, what should the primary roadmap to sell data products to business stakeholders? Business stakeholders. To sell data product to business stakeholders. You mean, you mean, you mean selling the data? Uh, I got a question in the chat box. Uh, MD Saifuddin. Selling, you say selling the data, right? Assalamu alaikum. No, sir. I just yes, want to product. know that. Uh, yes. Uh, from data, we can uh, uh, use it as a, is, is it not a product uh, to uh, service uh, business stakeholders to make decision? Okay, good. Uh, I, I, let me see I, the, way, the way I understand your question. Let me see whether I can answer. I, let me try to answer your question. So what happens is the data's, data's can be uh, retrieved in two ways. It, you, you may have the data in, internally in your company. You store it somewhere. That's number one. Number two is like accounting researches by data from data vendors. So we have vendors there, right? The vendors store data. Those data are not publicly available. If you want to use it, you have to buy it. Choice number two. Choice number three, you can also survey data. You can send surveys out and you can get the data from the respondents, right? Now, once you analyze the data, once you analyze the data, depends what kind of, what kind of proprietary rights you have with the data. If the data is publicly available and analyze it, and you can, of course, send it to the stakeholders. But if there's a proprietary issues, sometimes you cannot sell the data or the data analytics to the users of information because there is a restriction by the a proprietary restriction of the data. Are you with me? Say, for example, you have asked some sensitive questions from the partners that pick for accounting firms. They may not like the idea that you get the data, you analyze the data and sell the, or not selling it, you're sharing the data with stakeholders. They may not like that idea because if you do that, you have to give a disclaimer that this data is available only upon request or this data cannot be shared. You have to have a disclaimer. Depends on the proprietary rights and the depends on the source of the data, where the data coming from, okay? That's your, is it the question you're asking? Yes or Thank no? Thank you, sir. Yes, is sir. It, is this, but is this... uh, I just, I don't uh, want to say that I, I just sell the data, but I want to say that uh, sharing. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Sharing. You're talking about data sharing. Sharing. Maybe yeah, sharing. Course. Maybe. So, uh, so give. I'll give you another example. Let me see. I whether I can uh, whether I can answer your question. So, for example, um, there's a data set called Wharton data set. The words W A R D words data set. So, Wharton data set is super expensive. We pay two hundred and six thousand dollars per year 
for words data set because we have a PhD program and I'm the gatekeeper for the Warden data set at UMass, right? I'm the, I'm the person in charge. So what happens if you are working at UBT and I'm working here at UMass and, <coughs> and then you are co-authoring a paper with me and your school doesn't have subscription for that, but I do, that's fine. But if you are co-authoring this paper with somebody else and that person doesn't subscribe the data and neither you, and if Wharton find out, there will be a lawsuit because you're violating the copyright infringement of the data vendor. Are you with me? So that's how it works. Can I sell it? Can I use it? All depends. It depends on the situation. I mean, it's just, it's just, there's no what Liam could answer, okay? Okay, thank you, sir. Yeah. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yep. Yeah. alaikum. Okay, uh, I got another question. Uh, is it possible to analyze data without using a standardized lab? Without what is standardized? What? Lab, laboratory. Standardized lab? Uh, that is. You said lab, lab, right? Lab. Yeah, you do not need to go to the lab. No, 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 you do not need to do that. No, it, this is this is all secondary data. We are playing, talking about primarily secondary data. You can do that analysis yourself. No, exactly. It's very informal, yeah. But you gotta be very skilled. You gotta be very skilled. Okay, Masood sir. Well, uh, okay. Uh, uh, Professor Masood, may I ask uh, a question? Okay, thank, uh, yeah. thank you uh, for answering all the questions that we had. Now, <clears throat> let me sum up uh, what Dr. Karim has hey, been delivering to us. Hey, wants to put Hello. one question. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I see, then I should give him the floor. Uh, I, uh, I no, thank you, thank you, Professor today. Karim. I really enjoyed your presentation and uh, really I learned a lot of things. <laughs> thank, you very, thank you very much for having me. I'm honored uh, to be here. Most welcome. Uh, actually, I have a small question. Sure. Uh, about, about the future prediction. Uh, think about uh, the stock market. Yeah. Suppose I take uh, data of last few months mm -hmm. to predict future. the behavior future of a certain mm -hmm. uh, company. So my question is that if I analyze the data and uh, how far it will be correct, I mean, uh, is there any, uh, I mean, past data that uh, th this much uh, percentage of future prediction is correct? Yeah, so good. <clears throat> so uh, generally, you know, we do historical data to predict future, right? That's number one. Right. So if you, uh, if you like to predict the future uh, financial performance of a company, mm -hmm. future performance of a company, so you get the historical data and they can predict future. But the first thing is, you would look at the volatility of the of the returns and the risk data of that company last 50 years. So if you think that the returns and the risk data is not volatile, then you can comfortably predict the future. But if you try to predict a company which is extremely volatile, in that case, you cannot comfortably predict because the data is already showing you that you're analyzing a company which is extremely volatile. So it depends on the company data and the company financial situation, okay? So it depends on the company itself. I see. No, just say, for example, uh, I see that one particular company, their share value is going up uh, every day. Yeah. And, and I purchase some shares on a certain yeah. day. And the yeah. following day, it falls. Uh, yeah. I mean, the price falls down. Is it possible? Yeah, of course. Uh, so uh, let, me, uh, let me give you an answer. So when, you, when the price falls and the price goes up, you yeah. know, you you know. So when the price goes up, you have a positive return. When the price drops, you have a negative return, right? Because right. price of P minus price of P minus one over price P P minus one times hundred becomes the return of the security, right? right. So my my thing is, um, so whatever price change we are talking about, the price change is basically a reflection of the investor's belief. Your belief, my belief, gets reflected on the security price. Number one. Number two is whatever price fluctuation you and I see. If the price changes, we should not be thrilled about. If the price drops, we should not be sad about. Why? Because if you want to make money, if you want to make wealth on stock, we are talking about a long horizon, 30, 40 year horizon. So price drops tomorrow or price increases tomorrow doesn't mean anything. Right. I mean, it, it, it is not a one day snapshot. It's a long window and window is about 30 to 40 years. Yes. Are you with me? So you've got to talk yeah, about yeah. 
very long window. Did I, did I answer yeah, your question? Yeah. Did I, did Thank I you so much. Yeah. yeah, it's the investor's belief. It's a reflection yeah, yeah, yeah. of the investor's answer. belief. I got your answer. Right, right, right. Uh, okay. okay, any other questions? But I like the questions. Yeah, this, this is good stuff. Uh, I think um, that was all. Our Honorable Vice Chancellor had the last question. Uh -huh. <laughs> Okay. And I'm, 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 by the way, I am honored to be here. And uh, uh, I, I don't know, I, I cannot just think enough and uh, thank enough <laughs> that you invited me to make a presentation here. And my respected honorable professors, uh, Professor Shanti Naran Ghosh and Said Masood Hussain. I mean, I truly, truly appreciate and, the, and truly honored to be here. And thanks for, thank you very much for having me. Thank you. And, and my name is on the school website. If you have any question going forward, any academic questions, uh, any curriculum related questions, any, any other questions about the school to go to the next level, I would be delighted to speak with you. Shoot me an email. My email is always on. I answer email 24 uh, seven. I'm on the website. Uh, just shoot me an email and we're gonna get there. And when the situation gets normal, hopefully when pandemic is over, when I go to visit Bangladesh, I will definitely make sure I visit your school, okay? Thank you very much. That will be great, Dr. Karim. Yeah, thank you. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, before thank concluding you this for... session, okay, master, sir. Uh, yeah, I let me give uh, one or two minutes uh, talk about his lecture and deliberations. Then you can conclude. I think though the time has been um, over, it was supposed to end at eight, but uh, we are running twenty minutes late. So what we understood from Dr. Karim's deliberation is that science of analyzing raw data is this thing, the data analytic. And um, data analytic will have raw data as its input and it will go through the mechanical process algorithms or many other processing um, maneuvering and then it will be ready for human consumption. And in business, this has got a great significance and value, mm -hmm. particularly in production planning, quality control, as he said, optimizing work process efficiency, uh, then many other uh, things that we actually uh, thrive in the business, particularly mm -hmm. optimizing performance is one of the main objective then better mm -hmm. workload planning, reducing cost, he also mentioned, and removing bottlenecks, and uh, <clears throat> process optimizations, which uh, we need to do in businesses. Then he also talked about various types of data analytics, particularly the descriptive, diagnostic, predictive, descriptive, everything that we have uh, as a new subject. And, uh, Particularly identifying data requirement is the starting point and then data grouping, regrouping, classification, collection of data, organization of data, cleaning of data, as he mentioned, all these things are there. Then the sectors that are benefiting from this data analytic subject, which is a very new subject actually, and skill set is very, very important for this subject for successful profession. What we see in the travel and hospitality industry, then healthcare, particularly in the COVID situation, a great deal of data has been exchanged, analyzed, and also communicated. Then in retail industry, uh, then sports and other industries also, it has got tremendous value the other day I was uh, looking at an Olympic game and the competition was volleyball. And the commentator was saying that um, the name of the uh, player, she, she traveled one kilometer at a speed of 25 kilometer within these 10 minutes. So this is a data which has been generated through quick assimilation of data 
and in the football games also we see that such data sets are presented every time on the screen that this has been the attempt on goal this has been the uh, carrying of balls by a team such things and these are very very new we didn't see these uses of data like this in every sector say 15 20 years back but now we are looking at all these things so in education also this data analytic will be important in defense in food and uh, dr karim also told about business intelligence then business analytic and also he told about all sorts of data uses particularly the big data audit quality skill set and he also emphasized on the practical part of this data analytic credit card example he has given and um, the sampling techniques that are followed in different uh, accounting professions. Then he also referred to artificial intelligence, blockchain, and things uh, like all these contemporary things. So I think we have been greatly um, benefited through his uh, deliberation and also those who asked the questions we also thank them for putting on timely questions and i'm very delighted that dr karim agreed to be a part of our keynote presenter and in future also we are looking uh, forward and uh, we shall invite him to visit our campus when the things are normal mm -hmm. i think uh, he will agree to it because two of his associates, former associates, as I say, Professor Shanti Narangosh and me also have been knowing him for about 40 years and we shall be delighted to see you in our campus. So with all these things uh, all said and done, um, we have been greatly enjoying this session and I thank all the participants, including our right, Honorable Vice Chancellor, for being present in today's session. So that's all from my part, sir. Thank you. Now okay. Uh, thank you. Oh my, with uh, okay. Thank you. Now we would like to do a photo session. So I'd like to request uh, all attendees to turn on, on your video option, if possible. Yes, in Yeah. Thank you very much. Yes, in. Yes, sir. Capture code this, sir. Okay. Alungi, thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Gorin. Take care. Bye now. Bye. Sir, thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Shanti, sir. Tale session ba conclude kuchh bari. Okay, sir. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Adab, sir. Assalamu alaikum. Adab, sir. Good night. Good night. Hello. Good night. Good night. Hello, Laglo, sir. Session time. Good night, sir. Good night, sir. Good night. I'm so interested. I'm so interested. I'm so interested. Yes, sir. Hello, sir. Good night, 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 sir. Our Honorable Vice Chancellor Sarir, Mane waiter, colleague, on the Saifur Roman Sar, our Sar Apnar, Chatra Sar Apnar, the Chat Utunto Shundur, Utunto Shundur. Who Aajkeer opening ceremony ta ho, utunto grand hoyse. Mane ami to bolbo je. Uh, the best what I have seen so far. Yes, so, thank you. So, uh, I am very education minister, I extra So, it's a success for the ICS city. So, thank you. Thank you very much. 